Welcome back, you're still with us on Startup Street. Now, Bangalore-based space tech startup Digantara is all set to send off Pushan Alpha, a test bed, to evaluate space weather on SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket later this evening. Founded in 2018, Digantara is working on the development of end-to-end -end infrastructure to address the difficulties of space operations and traffic management through its Space Mission Assurance platform. Now, the company wants to make SpaceMap a robust one-stop solution for space launches globally. And to talk about the launch and the road ahead for the startup is Anirudh Sharma, the co-founder and CEO of Digantara. Anirudh, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. It's an exciting day for you guys. You're all set to send off Pushan Alpha testbed to evaluate space weather in the Earth's orbit on SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket this evening. So talk to us about the launch and the kind of preparations behind it. Thank you so much for having me here. So, um, I mean, this is our uh, second mission that we are doing. Right. Uh, I mean, at this point in time on uh, SpaceX Falcon 9. So this is a mission that we are launching towards understanding space weather because that is one of the important part for space situational awareness data sets. So currently we have a lot of data inadequacies and when it comes to launch and the launch preparation, so we would have to submit our payload to the launch provider a few months before. So, I mean, at this point in time, all we can do is uh, just wait for the launch to happen and, uh, I mean, get get the results for it. So at this point in time, uh, what we're doing is we're working towards filling these data gaps with space <coughs> data so that we enhance the accuracy of the data sets that we provide for space situation awareness. All right, so once successful, can you tell me what will the impact of this th that this technology will have? Uh, share with us some use cases to understand this better. Uh, I mean, if if I were to give an analogy about this, uh, you can consider as Google Maps but for space or another analogy as, I mean, just like the aviation sector, at this point in time, we have sophisticated infrastructure to track aircrafts. And when you fly from point A to point B, you have sophisticated infrastructure on ground that ensures the safety of the aircraft. Similarly, in the space sector, when we've seen a lot of growth happening, so at this point in time, there is no infrastructure to support such a growth or understand the space activities. So this will, uh, this technology will enable uh, un understanding of space activities on a level where we understand where each object is moving in, in terms of, say, orbital environment, and thus provide this information to anyone who wants to do any activity in space, be it commercial satellite operators, launch companies, governments, and defense. Even at this point in time, space is now uh, termed as the fourth op operational domain for defense as well. So this has a lot of use cases uh, when it comes to providing an infrastructure on space operation level. Okay, so infrastructure on a space operational level. Now, Digantra is building a comprehensive infrastructure for space, which includes operations, uh, space operations and space traffic management. So solving the problem on both the upstream and downstream side of things. So tell us about the various partnerships you have and how do you plan to monetize your product? So at this point in time, uh, we are working towards setting up of infrastructure both based in space and on ground because at this point in time, uh, we only track around 20,000 objects while we have more than 1 million objects that are yet to be tracked. And launching these infrastructure to space and having ground-based systems will only help us to fill these data gaps. And then uh, we work towards building a platform just like Google Maps that I mentioned, but for space activities and providing the solution to uh, various sectors in the supply chain of the space industry from insurance to defense. So when it comes to monetization of this particular uh, tech, tech technology, we work on a subscription level. Uh, basically, we sell this data on a subscription level to commercial satellite operators, launch companies. When they have to plan a mission, they can use this platform uh, where they can work towards understanding where uh, they should launch the satellite and once it's in the orbit, how do they operate and then how, how do they deorbit once the life cycle is done. So this is something that we do with uh, the satellite operator's perspective. When we look at defense, it's all about understanding where each and every satellite is moving. And space has a lot of impacts on the war that happens on ground. So this, uh, this technology is very essential. And it is also essential that each and every country should have sovereign capabilities towards space situational awareness, because this is one such domain uh, which can act as a strategic importance to the nation. And when it comes to uh, you know various partnerships that we have at this point in time, we work with more than four space agencies at this point in time, uh, various defense agencies working towards building POCs for them. And, and, and we work with several commercial satellite operators on a beta level because this is one such technology in the space sector, which is very niche, where we are creating awareness about the importance of having space situational awareness data sets, which can make the space operation much more efficient than it is today.
Right. Um, so it's on a subscription model and uh, you have a whole host of partnerships. So what's the road ahead for Digantra? If you could tell me quickly, what are the targets you've set for yourself and for this year and beyond? Uh, so we're launching a, a constellation of eight satellites as a part of our phase one, where, uh, you know, our entire constellation is around 40 satellites, but we're launching our batch one satellite, which is around eight satellites after our push in uh, mission. Uh, once this is done, what we do is we work towards building a ground-based infrastructure that can also complement the infrastructure that we have in space and provide services uh, for the satellites which are in the orbit between 500 and 800 kilometers. That's where we see a lot of commercial traffic. Uh, so apart from that, we are also working towards providing these services to defense agencies on a global scale. We cater to several uh, national defense space agencies. And, and at this point in time, what we're truly working on is we're working towards building a ground-based infrastructure for India, which we announced a few months ago, where uh, we are establishing a ground-based observatory in Uttarakhand. And these are the plans that we have for next three years. And we are also setting up a 25,000 square feet mission control center to be able to support uh, space situational activities for India. All right, Anirudh, uh, we wish you all the best uh, for your launch today. And we'll catch up with you and see how that went afterwards. But thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Moving on. Thank you so much for having me here. All right, moving on. Quick commerce has been the buzzword of 2022, but is quick commerce growing or waning? Ritu Singh talks to Kabir Biswas, the co-founder and CEO of Dunzo, to understand the trend. Take a look. If you've ever had one of those sudden cravings you, where you want to reach out for a snack and you want it very quickly or you went to office and you forgot something at home and you want it delivered in just the next 10 minutes or 20 minutes or you made that banana bread you've been trying for a long time and turned out to be well and now you want to send it to your friend across town, well, what do you do? You dunzo. The word has become almost synonymous with deliveries and quick commerce was all the rage in 2022. But as we're starting a new year, we thought we'd catch up with the uh, founder and CEO of Dunzo, Kabir Biswa to find out if India's love for quick commerce continues or is it waning. Kabi, thanks very much for being with us here on CNBC TV 18. Firstly, what were the spends like? Are people spending a lot more now than they were before? Has it fizzled out? What are the trends that stand out? Growth and first, thank you so much for coming here uh, at the start of the year. Uh, growth and traffic both continue to be really, really robust. Hmm. Um, in fact, we're coming off our biggest weekend ever. Okay. Uh, 31st December is really what it is. Of course. Uh, it is. Right. How do you avoid that? <laughs> um, and um, and I think uh, what has happened is basket sizes have gone up, uh, customer attention has gone up, as well as frequency has gone up. What is the current GMV like? How many customers are you servicing? How many PIN codes are you present in? Super. So I think uh, annualized GMV would be north of about 300, 350 odd million dollars. Okay. Uh, right. Number of orders, not so much. Uh, <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> Uh, um, food and non-food orders, if you would break uh, so up for we us, actually, monthly numbers. Largely, 50% uh, of the business is the quick commerce part of the business. Yeah. The other 50% of the business is the express package delivery business, yeah. Yeah. right? Uh, on the 50% of the business, it gets around of these 100 odds locations, uh, right? Uh, the 50% is in number of orders and not in revenue, okay. uh, right? The express package delivery business is... Uh, what do you call? Uh, that's the one that actually goes in and generates gross margin for us, is fairly profitable, yeah. uh, has also recently integrated really large players on it yeah. to be able to run last mile delivery for it from a growth perspective. But how is Dunzo Daily doing? In the whole year, we grew the category by about 25x. Okay. Uh, I think we should. In terms of? Uh, volume of orders and revenue, both. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, I think. Uh, we shut down about 15 of our stores at some point. Last year. Last year, right? Then sure, better. but how are you looking to expand Dunzo Daily? How yes. many cities are you currently in? Super, so we're in about seven cities right now, yeah. right? Um, we, for the next nine months, okay. want to be able to go deeper in these seven cities rather than go to more cities. Okay. Uh, the so there will be more dark stores in the existing cities? more locations in seven cities rather okay. than going ahead and going and opening up new store, new cities. Any numbers you could share with us? You would expect the numbers to go ahead and, and this would be partner stores and stuff like that. So okay. could end up going ahead and getting up by about 50%. You know, you have this ambitious revenue target overall for Dunzo, 2500 by FI23 with three months <laughs> to go now. Uh, are you on track to achieve that target? Uh, most likely, yes. If you could elaborate, where are you right now? Uh, How close to 2500? So I think our course? revenue numbers will most likely uh, more than two and a half x in the year. Okay. Uh, versus what they were last year. Given numbers are still not public, etc. Uh, and there is a quarter left to go. Yes. Uh, but from a run rate perspective, we are 2.5x higher than last year. We all 
also would like to know because losses did double in the last year, net losses. Uh, this year, how are you expecting to close the year? How much closer are you to that green line? So, uh, the way to look at the business again is those two parts that I told you, right? Uh, high margin business, the high margin, the loss, what you one. call uh, pure play express package delivery business, and then the then the quick commerce business, right? Yeah. Uh, I think in 2020 we got very close to being break even the overall business. Okay. Then of course we said that we'll invest in this category because yeah. we thought that this is a really large opportunity. And because uh, uh, competitors were also moving in. Sure, our data said that we should do this because yeah. we looked at the uh, this and said that why would customers stick to the platform more? Yeah. And we figured that we needed to be able to first party create a first party version of the experience that they were having. Uh, and so that part of the business continues to lose money, mm. right? Uh, and I think the other part of the business has actually gone ahead and 3x. Uh, and what you call its EBITDA, uh, positive EBITDA has become actually 3x also in the same time. Some point of time this year will be CM2 profit. Okay. And right? uh, will you be requiring some more capital, uh, you know, to be able to sustain this kind of growth to uh, build on your expansion plan? So we will raise capital to be able to go ahead and expand the categories to more cities. Okay. Um, so one of the things that we are making a choice this year is to say that, hey, you know, the capital that we have, we'll go ahead and use it in investing in the existing cities that we have. Okay, so we'll let you uh, go ahead and get on with these deliveries and follow you. Thank you, you. so much. just made one of your deliveries and I know you have more to do so I'm going to keep this very short but quickly because we're at the start of 2023 uh, you know how many orders do you expect to deliver per month uh, is it going to be higher than the previous years any projections for the year I think last year we scaled about 3x mm. right uh, for the year before that yeah um, I think this year we should grow at least close to about a hundred odd percent mm. um, I think it's going to be a little bit dependent upon how the first half of the year goes okay uh, while we go ahead and figure out our selection and customer targeting mm. and what you call our unit economics to become CM2 profitable yeah that will then fuel a lot of the growth in the second half of the year mm. but potentially another hundred percent growth here um, and that's really what we're shooting for Okay, uh, you've also had to let go of some staff, uh, you know, but is, is that phase behind? Do you think any more challenges you see in this coming year? Um, we don't see too many challenges coming up, uh, but there might be what you call changes in the way we have designed the organization, okay. um, how we have organized the company. Um, so I think last year a bunch of the company was organized around just plain growth. Okay. Nothing else, okay. um, right? But I think this year onwards, I think because we are able to, we have found a really large market, um, and we are starting to become profitable. Yeah. Um, I think the design of the organization changes um, to have a small set, of, to a, have a large part of the organization look at scalable business models, yeah. and a smaller one go ahead and look at growth. Hmm. And so when you actually go ahead and do that reorganization, in that there could be some changes that could happen. All right. Uh, before I let you go, uh, you know, last time we spoke last year, you said you plan to list in three years. That's 2025. Are you on track to do that? Uh, we think we are on track. I think the markets need to be on track. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, are there some milestones you want to achieve before you go public? Super. So I think uh, the number one one, uh, and I think it's just two steps, hmm. uh, right? Uh, the first one is... Um, because a really large part of our business is already profitable, yeah. we want to be able to make sure that the other quick commerce part of it also becomes entirely profitable. Mm -hmm. uh, given that should happen in the top six cities within the first six to nine months of the year, yeah. um, post that we'll go ahead and try and grow again mm -hmm. um, in 2024 and yeah. early 25. Yeah. Um, that should make us about a, in about two years time to two and a half years time, a billion dollar revenue business. Okay. That's most likely the checkpoint that we're looking at to be able to go list. Okay, so a billion dollars in revenue and then Dunzo plans yes, to go for around 25. Thank you so much and we thank wish you, so you a great 2023 and thank you for your time here on CNBC. No, thank you so much. I'll go rush for my next delivery. Thank you. We'll Super. not uh, stop you from that. Okay, <laughs> so that's Dunzo's growth plans going ahead. But with that, we're completely out of time on this edition of Startup Street. More news and updates coming up on the other side. Stay tuned.